You're watching Money Talk Viewpoint, and I'm Chantel Leeson. We're the online talk show for financial professionals who specialize in family office, high net worth, and ultra high net worth clients. The unique thing about successful businesses is they all have one thing in common. They know how to market themselves to the right people with the right subject at the right time. So just reach out to us at moneytalkviewpoint.org. Now, my guest speaker for today is Scott Buss. And he's the founder of Advent Jet, and it's a concierge service for the ultra high net worth. Scott, how are you this morning? Very good. How are you doing? Thank you, Chantel, for having me. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, tell us all about what you do and how you got started. I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, you. I appreciate that. So a, a little bit about me is I'm from the Midwest originally, live in, reside in Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, basically, what I, I'm a self-taught entrepreneur, like many people out there, was come from the mortgage and real estate background. And what I found out is I got into private aviation about eight years ago. And we always think as, hey, as owning something or starting something, the more that you can kind of control the client in a good way, the more likely they're going to have a good experience. So I started with the private aviation, and then it just kind of led into a global white glove concierge. So now we have relationships, family offices, sports advisors, you name it, family people that will come out and reach out and say, okay, we want to fly private. We need a Bentley. We need executive protection. Or they might call and say, we need a nanny, or we need a personal assistant, or we want to go to Formula One, or whatever it may be. So that's kind of what I did. I developed the relationships first all my life is I'm a very spiritual person. So I believe God brought all these relationships all my life. And then what I did is I formed a business around it, where in business, a lot of people will have to go out and get the relationships or the contacts. I've already built that all my life. I didn't know that until I was well, 47 years old when I started the business. You know, I'm going to say, you, you answered about five questions off in one paragraph there. I was going to ask you how you got started in the business, but you sort of answered that. But what I like that you pointed out is that it started from something deep within you. Yes. Because you're right, most of us do it from... We go through a cold list and, and you know, you buy a tons of leads and you just whip through the leads. But you did it the other way around. Correct. How did you feel? How did you build that first relationship? <clears throat> you know, I think the first relationship I didn't know back then. And being a very spiritual, a lot of my relationships, God was putting me in touch and place to form this business. And I always I was raised by a single mom. My mom's my world. Shout out to my mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> and um, so basically, I've always been distilled with trust and transparency at a young age. And that carries over to friendship, relationships, business, whatever. I always say you have to have a foundation of trust, respect, honesty, and communication. And so at a young age, I think that, that just distilled in me. I didn't know where I was going to be, but that's what it transitioned later on in life. Then I finally became a man. And it's like, okay, now I know why I have these relationships. You know, Scott, I want to point out something too. You said trust. Believe it or not, many people don't understand that, but that is a critical factor in building relationships. Because when you think about anything in the sales industry or the financial services industry or anything that people are dealing with people's assets, it's fast paced, fast moving. And to me, we, we sort of leave out how important that is. And it's not a fancy tool. It's just a, a gut level in the heart feeling. You have to be able to trust the people you are around. I know in family office, we can't have people on our team we don't trust because there's too much confidentiality involved. The people you're dealing with, they have to trust you. The clients have to trust you. All the people on that team have to be people you trust. Agree. I agree. So I, like, I like that you brought that out. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. Trust is something you have to earn takes time. Some of these relationships and building rapport with people, it's not overnight, but with my business, I've really never had to market. It's all been word of mouth um, organically. And I think that's the strongest part that I can give, give that God gave me the ability to white label build myself and trust is earned, but I'm also, the, I can be brash where you burn me once I move on from you. But as God would say, you have have a rear view mirror and you have a windshield. The windshield is going to move forward, keep going. The rear view mirror is so small and tiny. You know, I don't have time for toxic. And so trust is very important um, distilled. And I think a lot of people, um, and when you work with like-minded people, you shouldn't have to, it's just common sense. I like it. You're exactly right. 
Exactly. Let me ask you now. <clears throat> that being said, who is your target client? Do you have a specific target client? Uh, uh, in other words, are you doing with Hollywood stars or athletes or corporations or bit? Tell us who, who you who you look for, or how do you find them? Sure. So, so a lot of the relationships that I have are t- people on TV shows, high net worth individuals that want to not, you know, they travel private for a reason. They don't want to be posting to social media and things things like that. Uh, family offices, sports agents. Um, business women, business men, families. We work with all kinds. Um, the reason why is our, our company is a little bit different, if I can share. Most companies, you have to buy a membership and then you're committed to lock in to like 20 hours. Well, Chantel, if you're a businesswoman and you're only going to fly once or twice a year, maybe only four or five hours, why should you pay a big fee and lock in to commit to 20 hours? I know that word commitment scares a lot of people sometimes, but when you're talking jet aviation, so our client is, we have people that with COVID, they've never flown private, but they wanted to find out what the cost is and things like that. It's not cheap, I will say that, but there are alternative options out there to save the client's money, but you don't have to deal with, you know, it's it's a lot more economical. And I use this as an example real quick. I'm in base in Scottsdale, a lot of times we what we'll do is we'll have business people that will fly from, say, Scottsdale to California. And what we'll do is think flying commercial to California, renting a car, how many days it's going to be. Well, what we can do is we can fly to San Diego, L.A. area, San Francisco. You could do three to five meetings in a day and still be back. So, you know, we can do that to Texas. We can do that around the world. So it's now is your ROI worth it? Because if you know you meet at the FBOs, you can have food catered in. And it's, there's a lot of different things that I try to gain. I'm not just here to show what the best option. I try to give options for every client's uh, individual or family needs. And you know, you mentioned something else because you do more than just a jet, flying a jet. I mean, tra- transporting right. on a jet. There are a lot of other little things that people don't think about. But when it comes to high net worth and family office, convenience is a very important factor. You're able to do some things. Tell us some of the things you do for them that's more than just travel. <laughs> sure, sure. So a lot of my relationships opened up with trust and transparency. So I usually deal with the seller, the buyer, the mandate, or the attorney. And I have access to a lot of off-market where if it's real estate, yachts, aircraft, jewelry, um, working on a gold deal right now with a refinery. Um, so artwork, anything to do with high net worth. There's nothing that I probably cannot find. It's just going to make sure that the buyer and seller's terms and agreements can work. But I, I focus on a lot of things that most people don't do. That's what God gave me the ability to do. So flying is just a part of it. But working on putting big deals where if it's a $400 million property or a $10 million residential commercial, whatever it may be, I do a lot more in um, than just the aviation. Let me ask you a question about that then. Let's yeah. say a person has a family-owned business and they they want to scale to another level. And um, they've talked to a financial advisor, they've talked to a few people, but they, they're not finding what they're looking for. But they have, let's say they've got, I don't know, $100 million in their purse to put into something. Would they reach out to you? Or how would they they, they, they they could, because um, as I say, I'm not always about the money because when you love what you do, the money will come. And so I don't like to work with people that, what's my commission? What's this? What's that? You know what? If I'm going to work with you and be transparent, we're going to sign paperwork. We're all going to be taken care of. Okay. However, I have different relationships. So it comes down to trust. If it's a family office or if it's yourself or, um, you know, might not be a revenue split with me right now, but they might say, hey, Scott, I have somebody that wants to buy a plane or fly here or this. And that's how you you leverage relationships, monetize, I like to say, in a good way. And so I'm always open to having discovery calls and say, hey, you want to whiteboard or pick your brain, pick my brain? That's okay. I'm just a simple guy from the Midwest that just loves what he do, does. Well, you're beyond that simple guy from the Midwest. You're really, uh, with me, you're <laughs> way beyond that level. But what I like about it is that the heart of you is still there. You know, when Thank some you. people they move up the ladder and they grow, they sort of lose that that. What is it? Uh, they 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 can walk with kings but lose the common touch. You've never lost a common sure. touch, and that I think sure. is important. In fact, that's part of the poem. Uh, it's called "If" by Rudyard Kipling, and that's you, you didn't leave the common touch, and I love that. Going yep, on to that topic, let me ask you a question. You know, there's different different types of um, family office, and there's different types of money. There's old yep. money, 
new money, tech money, uh, entertainment money, the new influencer money. There's sure. all kinds of. Is there is there is there any difference in what you're finding with the different people that you work with, or is there not a not really. Not really. It's just the way they work. I think, you know, you have people that have, you know, the old money moves different than the people that have the the young, like the millennials. They're all about phone and technology and things like that, where some someone like me, I, I don't mind Zooms at all, but I like to sit down and break bread with people and build those relationships so much over the phone. Um, not really. It's just, I think, more more of the elderly older people and I'll put myself in that we kind of are educated old school I think the millennials the social influencers if you want to use them they don't know some of the options that are available they think everything is via tech and phone and I just think that there there could be lessons learned on both ways you know some people like technology some people do not like technology so um depends I think it's it's not sales but it's you have to intuitions i believe are very important and i believe you have to know be diverse with who you're talking to and give them options because somebody ain't gonna understand this but if you explain it to this way they might be so confused they don't know what you're talking about so you have to like sometimes i talk to people they don't even know what a family office is oh, and that's yeah. okay yeah. yeah and that and that and that's okay so when i explain it to them then they're like oh okay that makes sense and then they start you know kind of like a car you think of a certain brand you're, you don't think of, and then you see it, and then all of a sudden, boom, you see it all the time. So um, it's all about educating the right people and how we can all work together and monetize the relationships. You know what? Here's an, another, another thought, too. There are a lot of yeah. women on the rise becoming successful entrepreneurs. Women, and, and there's two different, I'm going to go to two different levels. There are women on the rise, and there are people that have never gone anywhere, and all of a sudden, at some point in their life, there, there's an upshot, something happens and their income, I'm gonna, it's almost like um, Colonel Saunders, Harlan sure. Saunders. He didn't sure. become a, a millionaire until much later in life. <clears throat> sure. And this is happening, I think we're seeing this because of technology. We're seeing a lot of upshots in people, women and, and, and young people, but but particularly women who are coming, yeah. like, coming out of nowhere and making tons of money and, and their moms. Any thoughts you'd like to share with women? Um. And what, well, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm asking that. You're a mama's boy, and I love it. <laughs> you love your Yeah, mom. I'm. A, I'm. I, I. I have no idea. I. I never hide anything. I'm 51 years old, and I'm a mama's boy. And I. Love it. I and I love. I love my mom the best. Um, I try to do anything I can for her, but I've always worked with strong women. They don't intimidate me. Where I believe there's enough money in the world that women can be successful, men can be successful. What whatever race, whatever you want to, not politic, don't bring any of that into it. You just, women are very strong. We need them in society. And there's some very successful women. And I think sometimes guys are intimidated or think, oh, what does she have better than me? And you know what? She probably, I'm actually working on a couple of deals right now that the women are the CEOs of their companies. And I don't have an issue with that because you know what? If I don't know it, and they know it, they know it, and it makes me better and it can make some a, a better situation better. Great. But I, I never have an issue with ladies, women working with. I th I think they because being a mama's boy, I think I've always looked up and expected and respected women. You know, I think women like mama's boys though, because what happens is we know that if you care about your mother, you're gonna care about them. Sure. And sure. and they're I, so I, I agree. Yeah. And you know, there's subtle things about the way women do business that's a little different than men. And and doesn't mean that one is good or bad or better or worse. It's just that sure. there are different styles in how we conduct business. And I, I, I think that women are going to love dealing, working with you. I, uh, you know, my next question is about corporations. People work for corporations sometimes their whole entire lives. <clears throat> and they, they have that desire to get out of that corporate model. And, and they don't even have a feeling for how to get past that point. You did that. You went from corporate life to your own business and you didn't do it at 25. What made you to make that decision to go out on your own and how did you go about doing it? It's a great question. Um, I don't know if there's a right or a wrong answer, but what I'm <laughs> going to say is I think the biggest thing with leaving corporate and going to something or starting your own, it's fear. Everyone's afraid of fear. Um, I was, but the thing is, is if you don't try, you don't know. Doesn't you know? And, and so, corporate America is great for some people. Don't get me wrong. I never thought I would be working for myself, 
But all my life, I was working for myself because I was building relationships. It just took me different ways to figure it out. Same thing if you're at a corporate job. But I think fear, and you know what? If you have an idea or you have a goal, find a couple people that you trust in your inner circle, talk to them, and you know what? Go for it. Because now we are in the world with technology. You don't have to be in a corporate. You can be you can white label off of someone else's business or network with somebody and come up with your own ideas and brainstorm. And so I I think in the world that we're in, nothing against corporate. I, I loved it and it shaped me a lot, but it's just sometimes it got too political and too this and too that. And now to have my financial and my own independent freedom, you can't put a price on that. And I would say whatever your dream is, no matter if it's small or big, go for it. And, and if you have any questions or ideas or suggestions, I'm happy to sit here and be a be a thought partner. And, you know, I mean, anything that I can do to help you succeed, that's what life's about. It's rewarding. What do you see are any growing trends on the rise right now? Or do you see any? What strengths are on the rise right now? Yeah. What do you think is growing on the rise? Obviously, the technology. Um, I don't want to get into the AI because I'm overwhelmed with AI myself. I just stay to what I good, what I'm good at because a lot of people with AI coming out. Get an example. It's so new. Everyone's like, I got to be on top, top of this or this or this or that. But then you lose the mindset that hey, focus in on what you're good at. If you're not good at the AI, AI or technology, find somebody that does. But I think technology, obviously, the last couple of years, I think not having to go into a building office building all the time um there's a lot of different things that i think have have changed yeah a lot has changed and i think that we have to grow with the change but even with all that change there's something that never change and that is character character i i believe character communication trust respect and transparency i know i, I sound like i'm preaching but um that's what i live by and if you live by that and you have those beliefs good things will come out it will come out. Let me ask you, could you share with them? Um, there, there are young people that listen to our show and there are people that are our age, over 30. Sure. Give, give some of your feedback for those who, who may be sitting on a fence, wondering what to do. What, what would be your input to them? So because I, I'm, I'm gonna, let me go a little further on this. <laughs> a lot of times they can't go forward because of the people they're around. Their friends, have been in corporations like themselves and they don't encourage them to move forward. So sometimes they get stuck because the environment they're in is a secure environment, but it doesn't push them to the next level. Any, can you share some thoughts that you feel about that? Because you had to make that decision to step out. Yep, I think what it is, is you got to step out of your comfort zone. It's not always easy for everybody, but I always say, and that's why I said, hey, if you want to talk, I'm always open. Surround yourself with like-minded people or surround yourself with somebody or, or people that have done what you want to do or ideas because you learn from them. Sometimes people, they and I'm, I'm just saying out of experience, they don't want you to be successful because they're, they're, they're jealous maybe or they're afraid that, hey, they might lose you as a friend or an acquaintance depending on your relationship. I say go for it. We're in the world today that if you don't try, you ain't going to know. And there's a lot of opportunities out there. And if you're st sitting on the fence, get over the fence. Um, that's what I say is get over <laughs> the fence. There's people out there that all you have to do is, believe it or not, reach out to some people and reach out and have a call with them or a video call and meet them in person and have a lunch and ask questions because that's how you get smart. You ask questions. I always tell that in school. How do you get smart? You ask the teacher questions, right? Yeah. Um and like I said, I and I never went to college. I went, I'm a self-taught entrepreneur. So um, I feel that, like I said, surround yourself with like-minded people. Um, and me being spiritual, not everyone spiritual or believes what I have, but I believe God brings people together for reasons. We have to figure it out, um, good or bad. We all, you know, test us, um, good and bad, blessings and not, so... You know, I, I like a couple things you pointed out because some people think, well, they they hold themselves back. They, they feel they don't have enough credentials. Credentials don't make you. They, they, no. I have found that some of my most affluent clients who didn't ask a thing about my credentials that wasn't important to them. What they really want to know is that you can do the job and they can trust you doing it. Correct. 
correct. It goes back to that basic thing of trust. People have to feel they can trust who they're working with. It's the same thing with, I find, in trying to build a network. Sometimes when you don't know how to build a network, where to go, you're right. I go online. You go online, meet a few people, set up a call like I'm doing with you, although mine is a talk show. That's how I started it. I started by talking to people online. And what would what they do to want to advance their business? And I recognize one thing we all need. We have to be known. That's what marketing is, getting known out yep. there. And that's my yep. talk all about getting known who you are, who can reach out to you and what services you provide. And can they trust your services? You have exactly. to get out of that comfort zone to do that. Share right. a little bit about little tidbits you wouldn't talk about except on, on my show. Cause like people want to hear that the, the gut level stuff too. Well, what you tell me, what would you like to hear? I got all kinds of stuff. If you don't mind, I have a little quote that I like to read. I'd like to hear it. Now I need my reading glasses, so bear with me. So this is just something that I always, I read a lot in, in today's society and world that we're in. And take it how you want. Um, be more <laughs> concerned about your character than your reputation. Because your character is what really, what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think you are. Wow. Yeah, that's a powerful statement. <clears throat> That's a very powerful statement. I will tell you why that's very important. It, not just in corporate life, but in any life, people th people will tear down your reputation. They'll they'll get online and tear you down, and 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 for all you know, they they can almost completely wipe out your whole entire identity. But who you are, and that's what it is. Your character is who you are. That's what still shines through, no matter what anybody. You can put mud on anything, but the real when you wipe that mud off, the real person shines through, doesn't it? Uh, and I, I can tell you a story real quick, if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. You just don't, you just don't know. And so at a young age, I learned, I was in the, um, I was in the sales business and a gentleman came in and he was in ripped up overalls. And the guy that I was working, a coworker at that time was like, Hey, go talk to him. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to go talk to him. Well, he already knew who he was. He was setting up for a lesson for me to be learned at 21 years old. He goes, Scott, I already knew who he was. I just wanted to see how you would go talk to him. And because he came in overalls and a farmer and a wrapped up vehicle and things like that, he ended up paying cash for an item that day, a large scaled item. And it taught me at a young age, you don't know what people have in their checkbook. I mean, and especially today's society with all the dot coms and tech people. So there's some people that just wear t-shirts and hats and, you know, you don't know what their self-worth or self is. And so I just learned that at 21 years old, 20 some years ago, to just don't judge a book by its cover. And I preach that, that because it's it happened to me. And so you just don't know, like, we're going to talk today. We'll talk again. You just don't know how our synergy is going to circus and how we're going to surface, excuse me, and how we're going to be able to work together with like-minded people. Um, God's got good things in store or he went to connected us. Um, and so that's a lesson, no matter who you are. It even comes down to dating. You know what? I remember being in high school, some of the prettiest girls, and now there's not the most prettiest girls. So things change, you know? So you got to understand with your brain and society, things can be adapted, you know? So you're spot on with that. You know, it, it, again, it goes back to character, doesn't it? You it does. Mean, people of character teach you how to improve your character, though. Correct. That man, it, rub, it, rubs off, it rubs off, it rubs off on you. It's something that you you can learn, but it's something when you're around like-minded individuals, you feel the synergy. You feel it. And those are the people that you want to be around. I feel like that's what's happening. I think I, I've, I've stepped into something where I'm meeting really, really wonderful people like you. And for whatever reason, God is blessing I appreciate me. the kind words. I really mean that. I'm, I'm stepping into something, so a new paradigm of really people that I can feel from the heart are genuine. We're here to help one another be successful. If we can do something, we do it. That makes all the difference in the world. And I, I certainly appreciate that. Scott, tell me this. <coughs> if someone online watches my show wants to reach out to you, how can they reach out to you? What, what's a good way to, to get back to you? Best way would be email probably would be scott at adventjets.com. Uh, all our social media, Advent, we have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. LinkedIn's a very powerful tool. I would I utilize LinkedIn. I've used it probably for the last 15 years. I'm aging myself. <laughs> um, so I would just say email or find Advent Jets on social media. And some, one of the members of the team will get you in contact with me. Or if you want to 
um, set, set up an email and set time to talk or Zoom or whatever. I'm always open for ideas, business opportunities. So you might have a client looking for something. You might be in the market for an aircraft, like how real estate is popular. Now we have the businesses that are buying aircraft because of the ROI and the depreciation, they can offset their cost and use them. And so, and to then charter them out. So there's a lot of different things, but yeah, I would say email would be the best. It's S-C-O-T-T -T at adventjets.com. Okay. Do you have a website by the way? Yeah, it's www. I don't even know if you have to do that anymore, but <laughs> adventjets.com. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? I don't need a jet today, but I'll tell you what. I, I, it's on my agenda now because I thought to myself, don't worry about today. Tomorrow's another day. You might need a jet. So maybe yeah. next week. You never know. Well, I told my daughter it, about you. It, so you know, and the nice thing is, Chantel, is it might not be today. It might not be tomorrow. But you know what? You might say, hey, we want to go to Lionel Richie in Vegas. And you'd be like, hey, Scott. Can I, I might know somebody who can get some good tickets or you want to go to formula or an opera. So we do so much more than just private aviation. We build a We treat clients like family. That's how I treat them. They don't always have to fly private. That's my main, the main business. But like I said, it spins off on so many different opportunities that, like I said, we want to be your global concierge company. I got to add this to that, your statement there. I grew up with Lionel Richie. So he's like a homeboy. I haven't seen him since high school. I might want to do that one day, so I'll keep that in mind. Scott, before we do that, I just saw him. In, I just saw him in August. He was amazing. He's gonna. He's gonna do the King's coronation, isn't he? King Charles. Yeah, he, he was at. He, he was at the win. Um, August fifth of last year, I went to go see him in Vegas. Wow, that's. I you know I haven't seen him since I was um probably. I mean, he went to Tuskegee. We did went to different yep. colleges, and his sister. You know, we lived in a small, uh, where I lived is a small subdivision uh, in outside of Joliet, Illinois. It was built in the brand new houses built in the 1960s, about 30 houses. But I swear, it was such a loving and warm community that the whole community felt like my family. Of all the places I lived in my life, that is the only place I still remember almost every one that was that close of a family to live in that kind of environment. And you know what? Sure. I, I, I'd love to reach out to him someday and catch up with him. And I'm going to go That'd through you to that one thing. I'll help you. That'd be great. Sounds good. Scott, anything you want to add to before we wrap up for the day? No, I, I, I just I just say, you know what? Every day you wake up, be blessed. You don't know what people are going through. We all go through goods and bads. But you know what? If you have a bad half hour or a bad hour, take a little time for yourself. And remember, there's 23 hours left in that day. So just stay blessed and um, hey, reach out to like-minded people and the success will come your way, however you want to find success. Scott, thank you so very much. Take care. And I look ahead to come back on another show. I appreciate it. You have a blessed day. All right. Bye-bye now.